It's not easy traversing the narrow mountain and coastal roads that connect to the communities in Wakayama. And I'm talking to someone who has the advantage of a car with seatbelts and air conditioning. Imagine how treacherous a journey this would have been a thousand years ago. Riding horseback or on foot along roughly hewn trails, stalked by angry boars and rock-throwing monkeys, and not even one of those chunky first-generation iPods to keep you company. Coming all the way down from Osaka to make a pilgrimage at the Kumano Shrines meant taking your life into your own hands. So it should come as no surprise that the roadsides of Japan are littered with small shrines dedicated to deities of roads and travelers. Collectively, these are called Dōsojin. Dōsojin can be found everywhere. I found getting footage for this segment difficult, actually, because they're so common you tend to look right past them. I had to actively retrain my mind to notice them again. Dōsojin may take the form of miniature shrines, simple stone plinths, or statues of the Buddhist god Jizō. Jizō is most famously known as a savior of children, but he also protects travelers, and so Jizō statues tend to be found along more remote or more dangerous paths. One such Dōsojin in the town of Minabe has a long and storied history. Over the course of a thousand years, it was constructed, destroyed, lost, found, and re-enshrined. It's been around long enough to become the subject of a local folktale. The protagonist of that story is Dōkō, a high-ranking priest assigned to Tennoji Temple in Osaka. As our story begins, Dōkō was returning from a pilgrimage to the Kumano Shrines. He happened to stop for the night in Minabe. Dōkō decided against staying at an inn, and instead made his bedspread at the foot of a large tree near the coast. Around midnight, Dōkō was awakened by the clopping of hooves. He awoke to find two dozen men on horseback approaching him from behind. One of them called out, Old man, are you there? Dōkō was too frightened to reply, but to his surprise he heard an answer. I am. It was the voice of an old man, but Dōkō didn't see anyone besides the horseman. Come with us, called out the lead rider. Get on your horse, and let's go. I can't, the voice replied. His legs are busted. He can't ride. Go on without me. The horseman silently departed. When Doko awoke the next morning, he looked around. He didn't find any hoofprints, or signs that another man had been sleeping nearby but he did find an old shrine, covered in moss. Nearby was a fallen plaque with a picture of a horse on it. The board was cracked at the horse's knees. Was this what the old man had meant? Dōkō wondered. He mended the board as best he could, then decided to spend another night out under the stars. Once again, at midnight, the riders appeared. This time, the old man left with them. When Dōkō awoke at dawn, he found the old man standing over him. The man gave him thanks for mending his mount's broken legs. Now I can carry on my divine mission. Were I unable to continue, I would have been punished severely. It is your beneficence that grants me liberation from this mortal shell. The priest replied, I have no such beneficence at least not compared to yourself. For three days and three nights, sit beneath this tree and chant the Lotus Sutra. Together, we will be reborn in paradise. With those words, the old man vanished. Dōkō did as the old man said and chanted the sutra for three days. On the dawn of the fourth, his partner reappeared. I have become a living Buddha. If you doubt, build a boat from the bark of this tree and release it into the bay. 
Dolko again did as his companion asked. After he had constructed the boat, he pushed it into the water. The boat began to glow with a golden light, and it accelerated rapidly, speeding to the south, out of sight. With tears in his eyes, Dulko dropped to his knees and began to chant the sutra again. Most of the pilgrimage trail that runs through Minabe today is an unremarkable paved road. But a short section of it runs along the beach before winding its way up through a shrine. As you climb up the slope, flanked by several objects of worship, try and imagine how many pilgrims have passed by here, and how many prayers their stone ears have heard.